Thank you all for being here. Kyrie Dennis. Kyrie Dennis is in custody today. And he is in custody after having been a fugitive for about 15 months. Kyrie Dennis robbed and murdered a 69-year-old man named James Watson, who was doing nothing more than getting some cash out from an ATM at about 8 p.m. on a Thursday night, March the 3rd, 2022. We're going to talk about the specifics of this terrible crime, which happened not that far away, six or seven blocks east, around 7th and Venango, is where he was caught, but the crime itself occurred at Germantown and Chelton, also not that far away from where we are right now. We are grateful to the Reverend Dr. Chauncey Pierre Harrison, senior pastor here at Zion Baptist Church, a church that obviously has a very, very rich history with the legacy of Dr. Reverend Dr. Leon Sullivan, who's looking at us right now. His face is on the wall right there. And we're grateful for the opportunity to be in this space and use this space for this purpose. I want to start out by identifying some of the folks who are here. We have with us Sheriff Rochelle Bilal of the Sheriff's Office, which has played such an excellent role in partnering with us uh, in many different ways, but one of the ways is in this continuing effort to identify people who are fugitive on homicide warrants. I also want to thank ADA Joanne Pescator, supervisor of the DAO's Homicide Non-Fatal Shooting Unit, whose idea it was to assist PPD in publicizing the faces and names of people who are wanted on homicide warrants. <clears throat> and I also want to identify today Kelly Burkhart, who is a victim witness coordinator in the DA's office, works with the Victim Support Services Division, and she will be standing in for uh, the unit that she serves for the Reverend Myra Maxwell and providing a report on that work today. Let me go to some statistics. So, as of 6-12 at 11.59 p.m., the number of homicides to date is 190. Last year it was 227, and the year before is about 15 more than that. Um, what that means is that while we remain in a terrible spike in gun violence and we have a very long way to go, we are at the moment going in a more positive direction. We're looking at about a 16% decrease over last year, two years ago, over the course of an entire year, it was about an 8% decrease. And if you check PPD's dashboard today, you'll also see that the number of homicide victims, excuse me, let me say that again. If you check PPD's dashboard, you'll see the number of shooting victims, the number of shootings. Both of these are down about 21% as compared the last year. If we look at the week June the 3rd through June the 9th, which is how we usually count these things, during that time period there was one homicide and 23 non-fatal shootings. As we have mentioned before, over the course of the pandemic it was usually more like 10 or 10 and a half during a week. Now that period of time does not cover the weekend. There were a number of uh, shootings and there were a number of killings, murders that occurred over the weekend. But certainly, uh, while we would like to see zero homicides, when you see one homicide over the course of the week instead of ten and a half, then that should give us a measure of encouragement, a measure of hope as we push as hard as we possibly can to reduce these numbers further. During the same time period, 135 gun-related incidents, 86 of which led to arrests, and 85 of those arrests led to charges by the DA's office. The median bail that we are seeing for illegal possession of a gun, 150 grand, and the median bail we're seeing for violent offenses committed with guns, 300 grand. I said it before, I'll say it again, cash bail is a failure. We need to move to a system where people who are really dangerous remain in custody 
as they await their preliminary hearing in their trial. And that is not a cash bail system. I'm going to point to three recent gun violence incidents. First one is a non-fatal double shooting. On Monday, June the 12th, in the 6300 block of Montour Street in the 2nd Police District, at about 3.12 p.m., two victims were shot. Victim number one, a 15-year-old black male, was found suffering from gunshot wounds to his legs. Victim number two, a 20-year-old black male, also suffered gunshot wounds to his legs. There are no arrests in this case yet. The investigation is ongoing. Anyone with info, please contact PPD Shooting Investigation Group at 215-686-8270. We need your help. We need your information. The public has come forward repeatedly to help PPD and to help us and to help the Sheriff's Department in locating fugitives. We need you to help us now to identify the person who is shooting down in the street two young men. Second incident, this is a homicide shooting on Monday, June the 12th in the 500 block of East Duval Street in the 14th Police District at about 4.19 p.m. An approximately 30-year-old black female was shot once in the head. She was transported to Albert Einstein Hospital and was pronounced a short time later. No arrest has been made by PPD. The investigation remains ongoing. Anyone with info, please call the homicide unit. It's a different number, 215-686-3334. Third shooting incident is a non-fatal shooting incident, although it has resulted in extremely serious injuries. On Monday, June 12th, in the 1600 block of North 55th Street, in the 19th Police District, at about 7.11 p.m., an 18-year-old black male was shot. He arrived at Lankanaw Hospital by private vehicle suffering from gunshot wounds to the chest, the back, and the buttocks. He was placed in extremely critical condition. No arrest has been made by PPD at this time. The investigation is ongoing. Anyone with info, please call the shooting investigation group of the Philadelphia Police Department at 215-686-8270. Ordinarily, we would have either Melanie Nelson, who runs the CARES unit at the DA's office, or we would have uh, Reverend Myra Maxwell, who runs victim services support here. Today, we have Kelly Burkhardt, who is a worker in that unit uh, and who works around the clock in incredibly diligent ways to bring people the services and the compassion that they need at what may very well be the very worst time of their entire lives. Uh, I'm delighted to introduce Kelly Burkhardt, who I've known for some years to be a pillar in the DA's office and to uh, take every opportunity she can to serve the public. I'm delighted to introduce her. I hope she'll say a little bit about what it means to do this incredibly important and incredibly difficult work. Thank you, DA Krasner. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kelly Burr. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's been a busy couple couple of weeks. Uh, I am, and I am here to remind everyone that every victim, co-victim, witness, survivor, and family members that the DA's office victim support team, including our crisis response unit, the CARES unit, as well as victim services, are here to support and uplift you during a very difficult time of your life, exactly like what uh, DA Krasner just said. And I'm here to say that we will not discriminate no matter what uh, location in the city you live in, no matter how much money you make. Uh, we are here to provide uh, support and resources uh, for everyone to help you through the trauma you've endured. For example, violence and trauma doesn't care, um, you know, doesn't care what your zip code is, doesn't care the color of your skin. And our coordinators are trained in trauma-informed care, which means that we provide uh, victims with their ability to give their input in whatever happens with each case. Um, as these things are reported on the news or social media, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that we're not here for you, it just means that we're doing the work behind the scenes. <clears throat> one of those cases, uh, one of those cases that we're talking about where a fugitive has been on the run, 
uh, involved uh, a gentleman who was uh, captured in Nevada by U.S. Marshals earlier this year. Uh, I quickly called the family and hearing their immediate cries of joy actually gave me uh, goosebumps. It may sound weird to say cries of joy, but to hear that release that someone um, has been uh, arrested and will be held accountable for taking someone's life is really what it's about. To do this work is incredibly gratifying and because co-victims, witnesses, survivors, and their families know that myself and our, uh, our coordinators are here as much as possible. Every morning I get a text message from the mother of that uh, individual who was murdered. And every morning she asks me, she tells me, have a great day. And it is so uplifting to hear this from her. We, we sometimes will continue on with just, you know, how's the grandkid? Um, how, you know, what are you doing this weekend? And she'll ask me as well. Then other times I will, you know, I will immediately tell her when we have information regarding the case. And she, you know, there's never any pressure. It's just someone who is always advocating, but also um, she's told me I've also become now a member of her family because I'm so supportive of her and, and the rest of her family, especially with those resources. So I just want to remind folks, if you have any questions regarding victim support, if you have a case that is in the process, whether it's for a preliminary hearing uh, or a um, pretrial or a sentencing, um, uh, please give our please give our victim support uh, phone number or call. It's 215-686-8027. And check out our website, phillyda.org, for any additional information that you may have in the court process. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate the wonderful work that you do. All right, we will now switch to our special topic as a result of collaborative work done with law enforcement, our justice partners, and perhaps in part due to these press conferences where we have been revealing the faces and the names of various fugitives. So far we have highlighted a total of 24 fugitives. It's my information that as we speak there are at least six of them in custody. And that's in a fairly short period of time. Yes, there are additional tips. Yes, there is additional information. Yes, we are receiving help from the public. And it is helping law enforcement to make everyone safer. And I want to thank the public for what they are doing. I also want to thank the families of survivors who have managed to remain patient with us as we do everything that we can to work with PPD and work with the sheriff to hold individuals responsible for shooting other people responsible. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you're out there and there's a warrant for you, you can only help yourself by turning yourself in. You will be safer, the public will be safer, law enforcement will be safer, and it will be remembered that you turned yourself in. You can only help yourself. For those of you who are thinking about picking up a gun, thinking about pointing it at another human being, understand consequences here are real. People are being caught. The clearance rate for the Philadelphia Police Department is going up. The prosecutions are solid and the victories are real. Don't do it. Do not do it. <coughs> Don't be the guy in the prison on the phone telling your mom you shouldn't have done it. Don't have to say that to your mom. Don't. Put down the gun. Have a great life. It's got nothing to do with the book. I do want to give a special thank you to the two officers who actually apprehended Kyrie Dennis. They are Officer Oyana and Officer Ransom of the 25th Police District. They did great police work. They were very vigilant. Eyes were open. They used all of their best judgment and they were able as a result to safely arrest defendant Kyrie Dennis, who had no intention of turning himself in. Well, he's in jail right now. Uh, and he is looking forward to his preliminary hearing where he will be facing charges of first-degree murder, second-degree murder, because it's a robbery murder, 6105, meaning being a felon in possession of a firearm, among other charges. 
This killing was perpetrated by two people. One of them was already in custody. He's already passed the preliminary hearing and he's waiting for a trial date. Kyrie Dennis is now in custody. And he too is waiting for a court date. Although his court date will be a preliminary hearing on June the 27th in courtroom 306 at the Criminal Justice Center. In order to give you more details on this, it is my pleasure to introduce the following two people. First of all, Joanne Pescatore, who is our Chief of Homicide Non-Fatal Shootings, who will speak about the case itself. And then uh, it is once again my pleasure to be able to introduce Sheriff Rochelle Bilal, who will discuss her office's commitment to working together uh, in order to locate and apprehend fugitives with all of our criminal justice partners. First, I'd like to call up ADA Pescatore, and then without my getting up again, I would ask Sheriff Bilal to come forward, uh, and I'll get up after that, all right? Thank you, DA Press. Uh, good afternoon. Again, I want to thank the DA for allowing uh, me the opportunity in the office for highlighting these fugitives. Uh, before I get into this particular case, I want to remind people of the uh, police department's website, philliesmostwanted.org. They actually went on yesterday, uh, and there are at least 10 new people that are on there. Go on that website if you have any information, if you want to give any tips, or anybody on that website, it's 215-686-TIPS. This particular case was highlighted at last week's press conference. Uh, it's the killing of James Watson, a 69-year-old great-grandfather who simply was at an ATM at 8 o'clock at night, an interior ATM in a vestibule area. These two individuals, this particular defendant and Corey Thompson, his co-defendant, were waiting for him. While he withdrew money from the ATM, uh, they struggled with him and shot and killed his 69-year-old great-grandfather. Corey Thompson was arrested uh, shortly thereafter. Mr. Kyrie uh, has been on the run for at least over a year. Uh, he was uh, found in the 2500 block of Marshall Street, uh, for, excuse me, the 3400 block of Marshall Street on Sunday by uniformed officers in the 25th Police District. Uh, he ran from those officers. They caught up to him. They were able to ascertain that he, in fact, had a a warrant for a homicide and he was shortly arrested. I want to thank those two officers and the other officers who helped uh, attain that arrest and the family of Mr. Watson was notified of this arrest and is very happy that the second person is also in custody. Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank District Attorney Larry Krasner and ADA Pesatori for coming up with the idea to put a face to those that are violently attacking people in our city. Now people can see who they are. So if you commit a crime in one part of the city, other people know who you are in the other part of the city. I want to commend those officers from the Philadelphia Police Department because what they did was pay attention. They paid attention, they saw the defendant, they had a visual from the DA's office of the ones that are running around havoc in our city and they took him into custody. Great job, great move. They are commended by me and all the law enforcement agencies in the city. We still are saying to the community out there, they can commit a crime in one area and then come in your area and act like nobody knows who they are. We are saying to you, go on the website, look at these men and women who have committed felonies, hurting our community, hurting our children, hurting our families. Look at them. They may not have lived in your area, but they're coming over there because now some people are looking at them in the area in which they live. So we're still saying they're out there. They have to sleep somewhere. They have to eat somewhere. And if you are hiding them, you don't want this smoke up in your house. I'm going to keep saying it. You don't want this smoke up in your house for you housing someone has committed a crime or killed somebody in another neighborhood. Let us know. Turn them in. Thank you for that, A.D. Pescador, and thank you, Sheriff, for that memorable phrase. Uh, no, we don't. We don't want that. The website that the Sheriff referenced 
is phillymostwanted.org. phillymostwanted.org. Please help us. Please help us, Philly. Let's find Philly Most Wanted. Let's get them in custody. And let's get some justice.